Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, glad to be today with Ilan. Ilan is the CEO of Auto Chartist. Ilan, I remember myself, I've been trading for, what is it now, 13 years? And I remember myself, you know, in my early stages when I was opening my, you know, first brokerage accounts, I had access to Auto Chartist services. And um, they were very, very useful. Surely at the beginning of my, of my, you know, my trading career, when I was trying to understand patterns and all those kind of uh, opportunities in the market to, to, to help me spot those opportunities uh, before my eyes eventually got trained to spot them by, 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 by themselves. But it was a very good way to visualize the patterns in the, in the chart. So I remember, so you've been in the, in the market for, for very long. Um, and we and we decided to bring our charges services to to our traders for free for the fibers traders, especially for that because I think there's a lot of our traders who are still looking you know to 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 master their 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 trading and to perform even better and I think our charges is a great tool and resource to help them accomplish that and. During this presentation, this webinar, you are going to walk us through some of the good things we can, you know, some advantages and opportunities we can uh, take advantage of using uh, Auto Chartist uh, plugin or indicators. So, thank you for you know making time to to sit with us and with the with the fiber traders. Excited for this session. There's going to be a, a lot of value for a lot of traders. So, with that. Uh, the stage is yours, Island. I will, you know, I'll be here in the background, but just do not Wonderful. make Thank um, you. any noise. I'll mute myself. I'll shut down my, my camera and I'll let you Perfect. take the lead. Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks for that uh, very kind intro. Um, uh, so before we get going, uh, there is a, a, a legal requirement. And I'll, after I share my screen and show you the, the legal requirement to make all the lawyers happy. Uh, let's take uh, 10 seconds to read the read the disclaimer. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll get into trouble. No worries. And while you do that, guys, please, all traders in the chat, you have the option to change your chat so everyone can see what you type. Please do that so we can see, everyone can see the, your questions. And of course, right. at the end, there will be you know, time for some questions if there will be. Um, yeah. And please, uh, you know, because there are a lot of attendees, uh, just if I miss a question, um, because it's difficult for me to monitor questions and do the presentations, if there's something I miss, just uh, just let me know, hey, Lan, there's an interesting question came up and yeah. <laughs> uh, that'll, that'll help me a little bit. Um, okay, anyway, we've, look, we've looked at, um, we've looked at, the, at this for, for, for long enough, uh, this uh, legal uh, document. Mm -hmm. uh, let me, uh, let me uh, switch over to... Um, uh, the Fiverr's uh, website. So firstly, two, two words about me. Um, uh, thank you for the intro. My name is Ilan. I am um, the CEO of a, of a company called Auto Chartist. We, we've been around uh, the markets for over 20 years. Uh, we, we like to think that we're the leaders uh, in automated uh, technical analysis. Uh, 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 I actually come from a trading background. I uh, traded the Johannesburg Stock Exchange for, uh, I believe, over seven years. Um, and then, uh, I, in fact, the, that was how Auto Charter started. It started as me building my own uh, tools uh, for my own trading. I have a background in computer science and, and mathematics. Uh, and then the, the business evolved and there seemed to be a huge need for the tool. Uh, and then um, uh, s since since those days of, of trading and starting a business I've been involved in, uh, I still do my own trading. I've been involved in automated uh, trading, uh, algorithmic trading companies. Uh, lots. I'm, I'm very, very deeply involved. So if you think I'm here to sell you a product, you're wrong. You get the product for free. I'm here to teach you about how I trade and how I uh, look at market events and market volatility and 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 patterns. Um, so I hope you see this as an educational opportunity and you're welcome to hit me with the most complex trading question you can. Uh, I'll try and answer, hopefully not embarrass myself, uh, not embarrass myself too much. Um, so, so first things first, uh, how do you get the auto charters tool uh, on the Fibers website? You click on the trading resources menu and you click on auto charters. And uh, you got a little um, web page here that gives you an instructional video, uh, a few features of the product, but most importantly, uh, download the plugin. 
right? So uh, if you click on this download plugin, I'm not gonna walk you through this in this presentation today, but um, uh, you know, it, it's like one of these normal setups where you click next, 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 uh, agree to some terms and conditions. And uh, by the time uh, this, the, the, the thing is set up, uh, let me share my, uh, my MetaTrader with you. Okay, you should see my MetaTrader, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, all good. Great. Okay, by the time you finish the setup, uh, you should get an auto chartist um, expert advisor inside your uh, navigator window. Now, don't worry. I know that expert advisors sometimes trade on behalf of you, like automatically. Our expert advisor does not trade on your behalf. Uh, the reason it's an expert advisor is for certain technical reasons, um, you know, to be able to show little windows inside the chart and draw inside the chart. So it's just a t technology uh, question. Anyway, uh, needless to say, uh, you drag the audit status EA onto your chart and you give it a little bit of time to load up and check the internet and authorize and all that kind of stuff. And then after a few seconds, you have a window that pops up on the bottom left of your screen. So that's how to install it and how to get it up and running. It's pretty, pretty easy. It should take you a whole five minutes to do. Uh, but let me say two words about what audit charters actually does for you. Um, you know, we had a preparation, a preparatory conversation uh, before this, uh, before this webinar. Obviously, preparing the the audience uh, level, and and obviously, you guys are not uh, regular kind of retail traders. You guys are experienced traders. You know what you're doing in the markets. You understand financial markets, and uh, some of you may be using uh, things like moving averages, RSI's, Bollinger bands, all kinds of technical indicators. The those indicators have a place in in trading systems, but um, they have to be constantly adapted to different market dynamics, uh, and you constantly have to adjust your you know the way you use them. The the thing that AutoCharters does it doesn't use any of those uh, moving averages, Bollinger bands, and and all those other things. It it tries to identify psychological overbought, oversold. Um, uh, uh, um, indicators in the market. So what I mean by overbought and oversold is, you know, this is a clear example, actually, uh, uh, Kiwi uh, daily chart. We can see very clearly, uh, you know, these kind of uh, levels over here at uh, 0 0.65, 140 uh, has been, you know, touched numerous times in the past. Uh, you know, these kind of levels over here, again, uh, what is it? Zero uh, sixty seven eighty three looks like um, has been a very very significant level on on the kiwi, uh, and and so you can see that these kind of levels um, occur again and again in markets. Um, we call these psychological support and resistance levels, where really there's a change in the market psychology between the, the buyers and the sellers. Where uh, you know on the um, on the resistance side the buyers are no longer prepared to pay more for the asset. Uh, and, on the, and on the support side, uh, uh, the, the sellers are no, no longer prepared to, uh, to sell for less than this price right, uh, for, for the asset. Uh, and so there's this, this, this kind of fight between the psychology of the market. Uh, and that's really what Auto Charters does. Uh, you might know uh, these um, types of analysis. Uh, some of you may call them support resistance. Some of you call them technical chart patterns, which is what we call them. Some of you might call it Dow theory. There's been so many names over the years, uh, but but really the, the the key in 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 all of this uh, conversation, what Auto Charters does, is that it, it it's not a Auto Charters is not a, a new thing in the market. Dow theory or theory of chart patterns has been around since the 1930s. Um, uh, Auto Charters has just uh, used, you know, the latest AI and statistical techniques to to identify that, right? To automatically identify these um, these levels in the market. And so, when you bring up the Auto Charters window, <clears throat> um, you'll get a whole bunch of uh, results uh, on, on your on your screen. And um, we'll just click on the view button. And when you click on the the view button uh, on one of these opportunities, um, what will happen is that Auto Charters will bring up. Uh, this chart 
in the specified uh, data interval, right? So I clicked on UK 100 B1, which means it's something on the daily chart. And we can see that order charters did a pretty good job of identifying this important level of uh, uh, 74.26, it looks like around this level, this blue line um, for this, uh, for this, um, uh, for the UK 100, right? Um, uh, similarly, let's look at uh, uh, let's look at another one, uh, Japanese uh, uh, or Japan 225. Uh, again, order chart has identified a strong uh, support level, and um, at, um, at let's look, look at this at uh, 32,000, around 32,000, and then the price has broken through uh, that that level now. Um, so, so what it really does is that instead of having to look through every chart and every time frame, uh, order chart is really scans uh, all the instruments available in your market watch window and shows you what trade setups are available for you now. So if in, in, in my MetaTrader here, I've shown all the instruments, right? I actually uh, click on, uh, clicked on show all, but you can really hone down this list if you, uh, let's say you only trade uh, euro, right? Or uh, only trade uh, pound yen, you like the volatility. Then if you remove um, some of these instruments, then uh, the results will be removed from order charter. So for example, uh, if we remove Japanese yen, um, excuse me, Japanese yen, or not Japanese yen, the Japanese 225. Oh, I can't do that. Hang on. Uh, let's find something I can remove. Okay, I removed UK 100. Uh, I'm not going to wait for it to reload. I'm just going to uh, reload it manually. Uh, you'll see that that opportunity on UK 100 then disappears from order charters. So if you're looking at really honing down uh, the opportunities you're looking at, then try and uh, remove instruments you don't trade from your market watch window. But anyway, this is all how to use it. Uh, let's more importantly discuss uh, how to actually trade this stuff, right? Um, uh, so order charters, um, by default, uh, we've got the search criteria uh, set. Uh, we can see that we identifying uh, what we call breakout or complete uh, uh, chart patterns, uh, then breakout and approaching key levels, which are these horizontal key levels, and everything else is disabled. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through each of these different uh, types of trade sets first. So right now, uh, let's look at the key levels patterns. Key levels are what we call, uh, what we give a name to these horizontal support and resistance levels, right? So let's look at a couple of examples. So this example is on uh, pound, on the pound uh, four hourly chart. And uh, by the way, uh, I am looking at the markets fresh, just like you. So I don't know what's going to come up. Let, let's see what actually happens. Um, right, so this is quite an interesting one. Um, I think order charters did a pretty good job of identifying this uh, support level, although I would have probably uh, extended uh, the line drawing a little bit, uh, but, but you can definitely see a lot of major consolidation at this price level uh, around here, especially uh, a few days ago. And what order charters is telling us is that um, uh, it believes that there's been a breakout uh, through this uh, support level and a possible movement towards this gray area over here. Now, uh, the breakout, right, uh, this breakout over here is actually visually represented by this red uh, red uh, arrow over here, right? Um, and, and so if there's a, a red arrow, that means there's, there's been a, a breakout. Let me show you, uh, let's say, say another example on uh, uh, Kiwi. Mm -hmm. Okay, again, uh, another example on Kiwi where there has been a breakout through support. And uh, now order charts is saying, well, according to technical analysis theory, the price is moving towards uh, this uh, level over here, right? So. Um, normally, uh, the way I, I would I would I would do this is, I would kind of look at these opportunities and say, well, is there a way for me to adjust this level, or uh, am I do I agree with this level, or don't I agree with this level? So for me, uh, for example, um, I I think it's a pretty good identification. Although I think that the price uh, maybe the support level should have been down here. 
uh, some looking at this thinking, uh, maybe this is not the time to, to trade it right now. I am thinking maybe uh, setting a, um, a, a stop order, a, 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 a bear stop order around uh, 0, 0,600. Right. If we reach zero six hundred, then I think maybe then the price will will move towards this uh, this level over here. I am not sure I would take this position uh, position uh, right now. Uh, although you know, order charts may have been right. There could have been uh, some interesting. You can see consolidation over here, uh, breakouts from both sides where support becomes resistance. Again, touching again a little bit of consolidation at that level. Uh, yeah, very strong resistance at this level. So you see, so maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there is strong, um, uh, maybe order was was right. Again, it's a matter of opinion. Okay, right. So so uh, you need to look at this and assess about whether you think order charters did a good job of identifying the support level. If you do agree with the breakout, then, um, you know, the, the way breakouts happen is that they're more reactive. So the breakout has already happened. And so the only way really to trade this is to go short at the spot price towards this level, right? If you if you agree with that um, uh, with that with that target, right? Um, uh, but let's look at another example if if we can. Uh, let's see if this is broken through yet or or not. Otherwise, I'll show you a different example. Mm. That's the opportunity on on the uh, uh, on Japan two two five. Um, uh, this is already also broken through. Let, 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 let's look at a couple of other examples on uh, the 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 um, uh, chart patterns, which are slightly more complex patterns, maybe uh, more appropriate for for all of you. So let's look at this example in the yen. So I'll click on yen daily. Let's see what's going on there. Okay, this is really a cool one, right? So so what this is showing us is that um, uh, yen. Uh, obviously, the yen has been depreciating against the dollar uh, over the last few weeks, um, and uh, and even uh, now, uh, the the latest trend is definitely uh, you know uh, depreciating against the dollar, uh, so it's moving up. Um, so the way to trade this, and as you can see here. Uh, this is not a green or red icon. It's a gray icon, which means that the price has not broken through support or resistance, right? It's still trending or moving between uh, support and resistance, right? Between these psychological levels. So really there's there's kind of uh, uh, three ways uh, possible to trade this. So the first way is if you agree in the current momentum, right? Um, you could trade at the spot price long. Right. Uh, the way to the way to gauge the current momentum, some of you might enjoy adding an indicator. So, for example, uh, um, adding something like um, uh, I don't know. Even let, let's actually be uh, uh, really really uh, simple about this. Adding a a moving average, right? And so, some of you may say, okay, uh, you know, the moving average uh, trend is up, uh, and it agrees with. Um, this upward trend in the yen, and so I'm going to trade this long, right? So always use a confirmation indicator. I'm sure all of you guys know this already. I don't need to repeat this. You guys are more advanced traders. Uh, never trade blindly on one uh, indicator, right? Always have multiple indicators pointing in the same direction. So that's one way of trading it, to trade uh, long at the current spot price with the trend. Uh, but there could be uh, two other ways of trading this, uh, and bear, bear with me, right, uh, on this. So the other way of, of doing this is to say, okay, well, uh, if we extend these these lines, all right, on, on the yen, what's going to happen in the future? So uh, let's just say if the price uh, if the price moves down here and breaks through, let's say uh, 139, right, or 140, uh, there could be a a selling opportunity, right? So one other way of doing this is to say, well, if there's a breakout. On the short side, uh, then uh, we want to go short, but we don't want to watch this pattern all the time and waiting for the breakout. So why don't we set a uh, you know some kind of a sell uh, sell stop order uh, on on um, uh, at about one thirty eight or one thirty nine, right? We set a sell stop order on the on the yen. 
uh, of course, uh, the same thing happens on the on on the other side, right? So, uh, what if the price moves up to this level? Sometimes, what I like to do is actually look at the previous turning point on these kind of trending patterns and say, well, if it hits uh, 145, uh, 146, then set a sell limit order, right, uh, on this. Uh, one thing I, I would point out is that I wouldn't wait for a breakout on the long side uh, of these trending patterns. I guess it's from experience that if a price goes up so much, uh, I I normally am very hesitant of people say, well, it's going to continue to go up even more. I, I think we all know prices never just go up or down in one direction, right? There's always, uh, you know, kind of pullbacks, right? So even if the price does move up to reach this uh, resistance level, uh, you know, you, you can probably expect some kind of pullback, a short-term pullback before it continues up, right? Or even a reversal. So, uh, you know, um, I, I'm i um, personally quite a big fan of playing these uh, kind of, sometimes people call them pullbacks or whipsaws or, you know, the, the market volatility. Uh, so, um, you know, think about think about that. So just to repeat myself, you know, uh, spot price long, uh, stop uh, uh, short at a certain price point or uh, limit order short uh, at a certain price point. You know, possible ways of trading this kind of uh, channel up, uh, what we call emerging uh, channel up, right? It hasn't broken through support or resistance uh, yet. Um, but uh, so let's look at a couple more examples. Oh, this is silver. I actually want to do that. Well, I guess you can trade silver. Um, I'm, uh, I'm not a huge uh, silver trader, but uh, it's a pretty cool example. Uh, we can see that the market has been uh, really um, going into a compression uh, over the last uh, few weeks. Uh, here, this is on the daily chart again. Uh, and so again, the possible ways of trading this, um, if you think there's enough room uh, to go short at the spot price, uh, towards this uh, support level. That's one way that you could you could trade this at the current spot short. Uh, and again, the other two ways of trading it um, are uh, are as follows. Uh, it could be a, a, a sell stop order uh, at about uh, 22 bucks, or no, 22.90, so maybe about 23 bucks, sell stop order, or a, uh, or a buy limit. Right. So if you think it's going to bounce again, you don't think a silver is going to go down even more, you think it's going to bounce, then a sell limit at about the same level, right? At about uh, 22 bucks, 20, 23, somewhere between 22 and 23 bucks, right? Uh, uh, um, uh, a buy limit, a buy limit order to play the bounce, right? Um, these these um, uh, consolidation patterns like, like triangles, I call them consolidation because you can see the market is going through a compression phase. Uh, are quite interesting, especially if you uh, like to trade volatility. Uh, my my experience as a trader has been that um, uh, these kind of compression periods always end up in a very very big movement, uh, either either up or down. Uh, and I've seen um, uh, a lot of traders using uh, techniques like um, like uh, uh, straddles. Uh, you know, to trade these kind of uh, positions. So, so you know, a straddle uh, might look something like uh, a, a a sell limit order at this level. Uh, sorry, uh, a sell stop uh, at this level with kind of a stop loss here, and then a um, a buy a, a, a buy stop at around that level with, uh, you know, a stop loss over here, uh, you know, so if uh, the market does suddenly spike up or down, um, then you're in the market proactively, right? You're not actually waiting uh, for that breakout to happen. You don't have to monitor the markets uh, too, uh, too much. Guys, I'm talking really fast. Uh, because I'm on a time limit and we've got a lot to put into this uh, presentation. And also, obviously, um, you guys are, are, again, you're more advanced. I'm teaching you like much more advanced traders. So, uh, you know, if, if if you need me to slow down, just say, Ilan, hey, hold on and slow down. And I do see a lot of questions coming through and I'm hoping, uh, okay, let me quickly see if I should answer a couple of questions or maybe I should answer. You know what I'm going to do, guys? I'm going to answer some of the questions at the end. Uh, because we do have quite a bit to get through, and we're already 25 minutes into the into the presentation, so I'll look at the, the questions in in just a little bit. 
um, uh, okay, so, um, uh, 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 where was I? I lost my train of thought? Okay, so now uh, this is so just to, to 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 make sure we understand the difference. The the key levels. Um, uh, let me highlight that the key levels of uh, uh, analysis type. They identify uh, right the breakouts as well as these approaching uh, uh, scenarios. Right with just one horizontal level, other support resistance. The Fibonacci, uh, the sorry, the Fibonacci, the chart patterns identifies emerging patterns and breakout patterns, right? Uh, and the chart patterns, again, are made up of two levels, right? A support and a resistance, uh, not like key levels, which is just one, one level, right? Um, the, 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 one of the interesting parts about the, the chart patterns, and, and I'll leave you guys, for you guys as an exercise, uh, there are certain chart patterns that I really, really enjoy trading. And those are the patterns that have a, a horizontal component to them. So, for example, um, a descending or an ascending triangle. Uh, if you guys ever read a technical analysis book, you'll know what that looks like. Uh, an, a, 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 um, a descending triangle is a triangle that is compression, but it it, it has a horizontal uh, component on the support side. An ascending triangle is... A, a compression with um, a resistance, a horizontal resistance. I really enjoy trading these kind of patterns, which is this situation here on a uh, euro dollar uh, four hourly. Uh, an absolutely magical uh, little little pattern over here. Uh, um, you know, order charters try to draw this blue line uh, to the lows, uh, but you know, if I'm looking at this thing with my human eye. Uh, what am I seeing? I'm seeing uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, support. Uh, you know, it, I mean, auto charts will just spot on over here. Look at the support at at one, just at, at one oh nine uh, fifty. I mean, look at the historical um, uh, support and resistance at this level. Just absolutely magic. And then, rightly so, it identified this breakout uh, through this level. I really enjoy trading these kind of things. I enjoy trading support, uh, resistance, uh, descending triangles, ascending triangles. I'll show you also a couple of statistics around them in just a moment. But uh, uh, you know, uh, chart pattern theory has um, has euro dollar uh, moving down to uh, 108, uh, just under 109, 108, 600 or so. Uh, that's what the theory is 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 saying, mm, right? Um, okay. Uh, now let me uh, let me erase some of these drawing objects. Um, talk a little bit more about other types of analysis. Uh, if you are a um, uh, a Fibonacci trader, um, order charts can uh, can also help you identify Fibonacci patterns. Uh, let's see if we have any on the market right now. Okay, we only have two available on the market right now um, that order charts has identified. Uh, one on Kiwi. Uh, and one on uh, uh, Nikkei 225. Okay, let's uh, zoom in here. I've got all these drawing tools. Let me uh, I'll move them out the way so that I can zoom in. There we go. I can see the zoom button. All right, a lot of lines going on here, right? Okay, a little confusing. Um, if you're if you're a Fibonacci trader, then you're accustomed to seeing a lot of lines. Um, uh, uh, Personally, I am not a Fibonacci expert at all. So please, um, uh, I don't really trade Fibonacci patterns. I'm a little bit skeptical, to be yeah. honest with you. I don't wanna insult anyone. I'm, I'm sure some of you use Fibonacci. Uh, for me, if you draw enough lines on a chart, something's gonna hit. Uh, you know, it doesn't mean that Fibonacci really works. Uh, you know, anyway, what, what does this Fibonacci pattern tell us on, on Kiwi? It's telling us that, um, if the price hits, uh, what is that, um, uh, 0.65, around 0.64,900, then the price could come down, right? So the only way to trade Fibonacci patterns are with limit orders. That is the correct way to trade them. So you can see that order chart has identified this thing uh, uh, like one or two candles ago. The price has not been moving up. It's actually been moving down. Um, so whether it's going to hit uh, 0.6490, I'm not sure. 
uh, but the way to trade this is to set a, a like a sell limit order at that at that price, right? Um, uh, um, same same thing for uh, let's look at this other example on the on Nikkei. Let's see what what this looks like. Okay, so on Nikkei, uh, order charts believes that if the price hits um, uh, thirty three thousand two hundred or so, it will go down. Oh, interestingly enough, yeah, it kind of hit it, it hit the sea level. Um, uh, it immediately went up to that price point and dropped down. So, kind of Fibonacci was right. It's probably too late to trade this. Uh, we're probably uh, miss the opportunity unless it goes back up to kind of 33,800. Um, let me draw that in. Unless it goes back up to 33,800, uh, maybe you can set a, a, a sell limit on 33,800 to go short. But it, to me, it looks like the current trend is down. So I, I am not sure whether I would I would trade this. Uh, maybe if you're good at Fibonacci trading, you might use uh, one of these levels as a, a buy limit. Uh, opportunity. Um, uh, again, I I don't know enough. Although I do see some consolidation, uh, you know, at, at these kind of levels over here, a little bit, not quite, more more like a trending. Yeah, I'm not sure. This is this is uh, probably an opportunity I would skip on. Uh, you know, and I guess that's really the point, right? The point is not to for order charters not to be prescriptive about the the, the trades you take. Uh, but really to give you an idea and then some things you might like, some things you might not like, right? And that's absolutely okay. Uh, uh, the idea is to let the opportunity come to you, um, uh, right? Uh, something I'm trying to teach my son now. He's a little kid. He's trying to trying to learn how to trade and he's always looking, forcing himself to trade. Uh, but I say, no, just wait for the opportunity to come to you. Wait for the setup that you like. Uh, don't force the opportunity, you know, and I guess that's, that's the trick here. Anyway, uh, if you enable everything, uh, you'll get a ton of information on your order charters window. Um, there is also a couple of these other things that I want to show you around uh, big movements and consecutive candles. Let's see if there are any big movements right now. Okay, nothing happening right now. Uh, there are these um, th this thing called big movements and consecutive candles. Um, I'll just explain in words where order charters identifies exceptionally large moves in the market. So I'm talking about 98th percentile and up. Um, you know, uh, so we don't have any opportunities in the market right now, but essentially what that would look like, let's just say this was a very big movement, right? Let's just assume, uh, for example's sake, order charts would tell you, it would actually draw a block around this and say, hey, this was an exceptionally big move on the on the Nikkei 25. Uh, we think the price is going to go down. Um, I, uh, if you're a trend trader, uh, then you wouldn't be trading these big movements in consecutive candles. Um, it, only if you're a swing trader, right? Because what they're telling you is there's been an exceptional move and the price might revert. Um, the consecutive candles uh, really is an exceptional amount of consecutive uh, winning days or losing days. So if let's say um, the 98th percentile of winning days on NASDAQ is seven or eight, if you hit nine, uh, then order charts will tell you, hey, you know, NASDAQ has gone up nine days in a row. Chances are it's going to uh, revert back. You're going to see a pullback. Uh, um, uh, so, so yeah, so yeah. Interesting enough, I just picked up a, a, a Alhaf has um, has said this is an impulsive move, and normally expect a pullback and a correction. That's absolutely right. Uh, uh, you're in the same mindset as me, Alhaf. Although I must tell you that for every person that is a mean reversion uh, trader uh, like I am, uh, there are there's another person that is a trend trader and thinks that the price is going to go up. Uh, so. It's you know uh, whether you know you have to, I guess you have to find your your uh, your trading uh, your trading uh, methodology. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Uh, now uh, I do want to point out one limitation. Although you see uh, these um, M15, M30, and H1 uh, options here in your in your meta uh, indicator, uh, Fivers has. Um, I think rightly so, 
chosen not to provide you access to those. They only provide you access to the H4 and D1 uh, patterns. Um, I guess uh, they do want to protect you uh, from uh, extreme market volatility. And that is really what you get when you're looking at the patterns on M15, M30. Uh, specifically, they're very, very high risk. And I guess that they have uh, your welfare in mind, uh, which is really a great thing, actually. Um, so many brokers don't don't do that. Uh, so they want you to succeed. So they definitely do focus on the longer term, uh, the longer term uh, patterns uh, for you. Okay, that's a little bit about how to use the tool in in general. Oh, sorry, let me uh, uh, click save there. Okay, now um, uh, there's a couple of things I want to point out. Uh, the first thing is um, is if you click on this little uh, world icon. Uh, there is a link that you get called performance statistics. You can copy this link and paste it into your browser. Now I'm going to quickly uh, change my screen share so you guys can see my browser window. Uh, one, one moment. Uh, here it is. Okay, I've copied and pasted that link uh, into the browser and it comes up with the screen as we see it here. I wanna, I wanna disclaim something, again, to make the lawyers happy before we talk about this. Uh, past performance may not be indicative of future performance. Okay, so remember that past performance may not be indicative of future performance. What we do at Auto Charters is we monitor how often we hit our forecast price. So if you remember, um, on the breakout patterns, um, there was a forecast region. We monitor how often we hit that forecast region. Okay, um, so we don't monitor how much money you make or anything like that. We don't. It's independent of stop loss strategy, take profit strategy. We literally ask the question: In the last twelve months, how many patterns hit that target region? Right. Okay, um, and. And so the overall, okay, let's actually look at FX. Are most of you FX traders here or are most of you uh, index or commodity traders? Um, uh, maybe let me know in the chat window. I'd love to know. Uh, let's look at FX. Uh, uh, okay, I get, I'm getting a lot of FX. Okay, so let's look at some FX stats. Okay, perfect. So the Forex stats are broken down into two uh, categories, breakout patterns and emerging and approaching patterns. So, so for uh, breakout patterns, um, the overall statistics over the last uh, 12 months is we've hit our target region 67% of the time, uh, which is pretty amazing. Uh, but then we have breakdowns by uh, patterns, uh, individual patterns. And you can see ascending triangle has done uh, pretty well. Descending triangle, not that much, uh, not, a, not as well. Um, uh, falling wedges have done well. Uh, head and shoulders have done exceptionally well, which they normally are really, really good. Inverse head and shoulders, um, you know, only five of them. Again, this is only for four hourly and daily uh, candles, right? Um, but but anyway, um, triangles, lots of them, 142, 68% of them hit their target region. Uh, these are the breakout triangles. And I leave it to you. We don't have enough time to, to delve into this right now in this presentation. You can go ahead and, and look at the instruments um, uh, yourself, the direction. The hours of the day is uh, extremely important. Um, you know, um, you will find that the best stats actually happen during your European sessions, uh, and and uh, that's because obviously there's a lot of liquidity. London is the center of the world when it comes to currency trading and currency clearing, and so you know you can definitely. Um, uh, you know, if you're trading European hours, uh, you're trading um, and at the best time, obviously. Um, but but anyway, uh, you can look at those in your own time. If you look at the emerging patterns, only support and resistance. Uh, we look at emerging patterns. We don't do statistics on emerging cart patterns. And there's a reason for that because of the rising or the, the trending lines. It's impossible to give a specific level, um, but uh, we do measure support and resistance. Uh, and you will notice very quickly that the numbers on 
um, the emerging support and resistance levels are phenomenal. Okay, uh, so let, <laughs> um, okay. So now all of you are going to go and you're going to change uh, your order chartist uh, to uh, you're going to change it to only look at uh, emerging uh, emerging uh, key levels, right? Okay. <laughs> um, so uh, yes and no. The they they are really really good. These emerging key levels are really good. Um, the the problem I find with them is that uh, it's very difficult to trade them. So, for example, in this situation, I can see about where this blue line ended. Um, the blue line ended here, which means that order chart has identified this pattern uh, on this candle over here, which means there was very little place for it to move. So if you are setting your order charters for the highest probability patterns, which are the uh, key levels, the emerging key levels specifically, you literally have to have this thing running all the time in a window, monitoring it like an absolute hawk. Because when the opportunity does come up, um, uh, the amount of time that you have to trade uh, between the identification and the target is very, very short. So I think, I think the stats are a little bit skewed because, you know, even with market noise, the price hits it. Uh, but, but definitely, you know, um, uh, they're really, really powerful patterns. The, 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 the key levels in general are, are really, really powerful. Uh, uh, you know, if you're really looking to hone your, your trades and only look at a few opportunities, I would look at the, the key levels um, <laughs> alone. Um, uh, uh, and and um, although it doesn't give you that ability is to look at the, the chart patterns with the horizontal component in them. Okay. Ooh, I've spoken a lot and it's almost time for Q&A. So I, I do want to talk about one more thing, uh, actually. Um, so let's pick an example. Here. And um, uh, let's, I want to talk about these uh, volatility levels over here. If you see these blue lines, I've been avoiding talking about them, but I want to say a few words about them now. Um, uh, this, these lines here are what we call volatility analysis lines. What I'm going to do for this example is I'm going to change to an H4 chart. Let me find my, uh, here we go, H4. Um, actually, let me go all the way to H1. <clears throat> Um, well, this one doesn't give us great information. Okay, let's look at H4. All right, so sorry about me playing around. Uh, I'm, I'm new to the current market conditions as you are. So what are these volatility lines? These volatility lines are when we look back over the last uh, 12 months and we look at the current time of day, and the day of the week. And we try to provide you an indication with a 67% uh, um, confidence rate, it's one standard deviation confidence rate of the range in which this instrument pound uh, will trade in the next four hours and in the next uh, 24 hours, right? So this indicator is not based on. Uh, you know, uh, any current market uh, volatility, right? So it's not ATR or ADX or anything like that. It is purely based on historically uh, seen uh, volatility, right? For this day of the week, for this time of day. And that's very, very important because I'm sure, I'm very confident that as many of you know, Euro dollar or pound dollar don't trade the same uh, during the London opening and New York opening as they do during Sydney opening, right? The volatility is completely different. And so 
the 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 reason to look at these lines very important lines is for two reasons number one uh, for me one of the most important reasons is i'm very very passionate about risk management okay so if you are looking to sell uh, uh looking to sell looking to set uh, stop losses or take profits right let's just say hypothetically uh, let's say hypothetically you're going short uh, on on the pound right now okay then uh, where can you expect the price to be in the next four hours a day, right? So if you're setting your stop loss, you know, at uh, 128.50, what is it, 128.250? You, you know, and the thing goes the wrong way, you're going to be waiting over a day or two to hit that stop loss, right? Very, very important to know that, right? So if you're looking at setting a stop loss, if it goes the wrong way, uh, you know, that you're reasonably out of the market within a reasonable amount of time and not using up very, very precious margin, right, which could be used for other trades, right, then you want to set a reasonably timed uh, exit level, right? And so, um, uh, you know, you, one should consider, for example, uh, 127.50 as a possible exit level. I also want to point out that it has been my experience that these volatility levels actually in themselves identify very interesting turning points in the market and you can see how this four hourly vol level has identified that in the market the 24 hour vol level has identified kind of the highs of the market right the previous highs in the market so they um they're they're really really uh interesting levels on, on at at, at you know, um, uh, uh, to to look at. However, not only for risk management, I've also seen traders use them to trade. Uh, let me actually bring up, uh, I'm sure a lot of you trade Euro. Let's look at Euro. <clears throat> so let's uh, allow... Uh, order chart is to bring up its information on the euro four hourly chart. <clears throat> okay. Oh, why am I not seeing volatility levels? Oh, always during a presentation, right? Something's going to go wrong. Everything's been going so smoothly up to now. And then, okay, here we go. Let's look at the one hour levels. Okay. Okay, the one hour levels are not there. Um, we don't provide you the one hour levels, but again, four hour levels on, on Euro dollar. Um, I think we need to get my guys to remove this one hour levels. Uh, you need to ignore that. I think that's a little that's a little bug. Um, but you can see clearly the four hours and the and the daily and the daily levels coming up. So what is another way to, to trade the uh, to trade euro? Even if you don't use all these um, support resistance uh, stuff. You can also trade these volatility levels to, to place trades and uh, especially the mean reversion traders there um, amongst you. I have seen a trader saying, well, I know this is a 67% uh, chance of hitting this level, right? Of one oh, uh, let's just say one one, right? With a nice round number, <laughs> one one. I have seen traders place uh, sell limit orders at this level. Similarly, uh, at uh, uh, buy limit orders at, uh, let's say, 1.09, right? Uh, set uh, buy limit orders. Uh, smaller positions on the extreme daily movements, right? So if you're a mean reversion trader, there's another way to trade these things, right? Which to actually look at these levels and use them as support resistance in order to place your mean reversion uh, uh, strategies, right? Uh, to for, for assuming that if it moves towards this price, maybe a bit beyond it, it's already moved within 67% of its probability, right? With 67% confidence. If it moves even more than that, right? Within four hours, then it's time for the thing to turn around, right? So you're looking for these extreme moves. Again, um, uh, 
uh, I won't name names, but there's some very, very famous uh, traders uh, who use our tools uh, specifically for that uh, for that reason. Uh, they they completely ignore actually the the support and resistance stuff, and they and they only trade um, the uh, the volatility lines uh, in a in a mean reversion or you know pullback or whatever you want to call it um, uh, strategies. Uh, okay. All right, I have spoken so much. I'm going to quickly, um, if you guys don't mind, uh, look back at some of the questions from the very beginning. Uh, because I've only got 10 minutes, I was given strict instructions to end at on the top of the hour. By the way, before I forget, I had to try and squeeze a lot of information into one webinar. Sometimes I give two or three webinars about, about these topics. Um, if you want another webinar, please let the uh, the, the Fibers guys know uh, that, hey, I did find it interesting. We want another session with Ilan uh, or even tell them that was a complete waste of time. Don't bring Ilan, bring Ilan back ever again. Yeah. <laughs> I would, no. uh, um, so so let's do that. In, in the meantime, uh, Saul, did, did you find anything interesting that I missed? Because I just see uh, so much questions going through. No, there, there wasn't any, sure. any. There wasn't any relevant uh, questions as, at first, but maybe we'll take uh, one or two now. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so let's see. Um, if there's something. Uh... So I see that I'm. I'm looking at a couple of interesting ones. So. Uh, oh, I hope I don't butcher this name. Uh, Pierre Giorgio. I hope I've said he's asking whether August is a bad bad month to trade. <laughs> well, I think I'm not sure if August is a bad month to, to trade. Uh, Stuart tried to answer. Uh, August has a lot of sell opportunities for swing traders. Um, well, I, I'm not sure if either of those uh, questions is, is valid or answers is valid. Um, I, I think there's a lot of uncertainty in the market right now. Um, and I think this is why you're seeing a lot of sideways movement in the market. Uh, and and I do think it right now is a is a mean reversion or swing traders paradise at, at the moment. I'd have to agree with Stuart, but I think it's not because of the month of August. I think it's because of uh, uh, just current uh, economic and, and and financial times uh, in the market. Um, um, uh, and there was a question regarding five minute charts, um, and just to uh, clear this for all traders, we opt to offer for the fiber traders uh, only the four hours and daily uh, time frames patterns so even if they go ahead and mark the one hour or 15 minutes or something like that for our traders they will not get it because we want to give them time to to take advantage of those of those patterns uh, you know if we were given patterns on the one minute or five minute charts you know you, you it, it, it's it's uh, it's too fast for training so we want and, and i must tell you it's and i must tell you that think about the first thing i said in this presentation which is chart patterns are based on market psychology you know you can draw lines anywhere but market psychology does not happen in five minutes okay it, it simply doesn't uh, market psychology happens on longer time frames uh so you know i i, I think there's there's validity to to what uh fibers has, has decided to do here um, again, I, I'm talking of my personal my personal trading experience. Completely, completely. And there's a there's a technical question if this can be used on Mac. Um... Right. So it absolutely can. It's a slightly more complex uh, installation process. Um, let me quickly switch screens. Um... And James, I'll answer that. You get signals for all currencies or only a few. Uh, you get for the all the majors and their crosses and their mi minors and the crosses. So everyone you have open on your watch list it will be taken to your auto chartist um, filter. Exactly. Or... Exactly. Yeah. Um, and so uh, if the question about the Mac, if you go to the Fiverr's website, uh, you can see there's a question: Can I use it on Mac? It is a slightly more complex uh, installation process, <clears throat> but I, I hope that you'll get value out of it. It'll take you maybe. 15 to 20 minutes to install it. Uh, you have to download a, a zip file, and then you uh, have to just follow this uh, instructions on this knowledge base article uh, around how to follow the instructions. But yes, you can get it to work on Mac. Right. And other than that, I see a lot of uh, positive comments and feedback. Um, so I think right. uh, I think uh, Ilan, 
traders are getting used to this and they're, they're just starting to install that and use it. So I think okay. in a couple of weeks or maybe next month or something, we can schedule another webinar to to give some follow up and to see how traders are getting taking advantage or to complement right. this first webinar. Um, so we'll do that for sure. But I think it was very, very uh, interesting. And um, great. Yeah, I, I, pre very, I appreciate the opportunity valuable. as well. And what I've done is I've put my email address. I see a couple of you guys have asked for contact details for me. Um, I just want to point out what to expect when you communicate with me. Uh, mm -hmm. Number one, I cannot give you advice on what to trade, right? So uh, if you ask me, Ilan, should I go long or short on Euro? I simply cannot give that to you. Uh, that's that's number one. Um, number two is uh, if you ask me a technical question, my order chart doesn't work, I'll probably forward, I would probably uh, forward you onto my support desk. Uh, uh, um, uh, and the last thing I want to tell you is that I travel a ton. Um, so if I don't get back to you, you know, immediately when you send me an email, uh, please excuse me. Probably means I'm on an airplane somewhere, or I'm traveling somewhere, or you know, something like this. Uh, but happy to talk about my experience as a trader, trading in general. You know, please don't ask me for for advice. Um, this puts me in a very difficult situation. Okay. Um, Fair enough. Fair enough. So, yeah. um, Ilan, thank you very much for taking the time to come in to us and um, sharing your knowledge. Um, and thank you all traders for, for coming as well, always and for staying. Um, and uh, yeah, I think until, until next time, it was uh, pure, pure right. value here. I really appreciate it. Wonderful. Wonderful. Appreciate the opportunity. See you all soon. Bye, everybody. Fantastic. Enjoy the rest of your Bye, day. Bye, everybody. Bye, Ilan. Thank you.